be seated. I'd like to preach today about prosperity. I'm going to preach the prosperity gospel today. Who wants to hear prosperous good news? Okay. I'm here today to tell you God wants you enriched. God wants you abundant. God wants you lacking in nothing, St. Paul said. Lacking in nothing. Enriched. And actually, that's what the word shalom means. It's, it's synonymous to eternal life. Holistic fullness of life for us, which is what Jesus came to do and to die for our sins, to provide for us. In, in the Beatitudes that we heard today, that word blessed, that means what I'm talking about, prosperity. Prosperous, abundant, doubly blessed. Not just blessed, but doubly blessed. You know, sometimes our English language is short of, of right? Not our English language, but the English language. His English language. <laughs> short, short of the original, uh, language used in the Bible. But it means immensely, tremendously happy. Twice blessed. Jesus said, There's his, you know, the rewards are we, uh, we walk in blessedness, and he outlines the, those things in, in the attitudes. We will inherit the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, we will inherit the earth. We will be sons of God. We will be comforted, etc. We will be doubly blessed. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven, one of the rewards. Yeah. Now, when I was reading that, I thought, well, I thought God, the Father, God, the Father already gladly gave us the kingdom. Well, He did. He did. What He actually is saying is, yours is the kingdom of heaven, available to you. It's available, what I said before, available, available, so avail of all its provisions. Available, available. It's with provisions. How? Micah, the Old Testament reading, said, He has shown you, God has shown you, man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. We'll talk about that requirement more later. What is good, what is appropriate? For what he's preparing you, your inheritance of his kingdom. What do you need for it? What is good? He's preparing and he's telling you. Micah said, God is not pleased with, with sacrifice and offerings, right? He said, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not pleased with a thousand sacrifices or a thousand rivers of oil. For offering, no. This is what is good to, to love justice, show mercy, walk humbly. That's what I have. Again, more of that later. Um, not legal things, but these things: justice, love, mercy, walking humbly, preferring one another, regarding one another as more important than self. Are the rewards different or the same? Because sometimes, as Jesus says, they shall inherit the earth. Or theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, if we are, I don't know, certain kind of a thinker in, in the Christian circles, say dispensationalists or whatever, we would think, oh, I'd rather do the provision with the reward of inheriting the kingdom of heaven. Not inheriting the earth. Because the earth is going to be destroyed anyway, right? Why inherit something that's not going to last. No, they're the same. They're the same. One day heaven and earth will become one again. Like they were in Eden. Eden was heaven on earth. And we're going back there. That's why Jesus is restoring. It's not being restored. Iba balik. It's dating kagandaan. And we're going back there. Heaven, earth becoming one. How? Heaven's will, God's will, being done in heaven as on earth. 
Nothing to do with geo geography. Nothing to do with material, material state. It has to do with God's will being done once again in its fullness on earth where he put us, material people. And he's preparing us for that life. Preparing us for that life. Because we would be the sons of the resurrection. After this life, we die, we go to uh, I would, what I would say, a temporary place, maybe called heaven or whatever, holy place. we will all come back in our resurrected bodies and live kingdom life. And this is what Jesus is preparing us for. Right now, practice the training the Bible. Because we will get to that day when we will walk with Him, pray with Him, fellowship with Him, and with one another in that heaven on earth. What is good? What is good is what, what's described in creation, right? Before the fall of Adam. Behold, everything God made was good. We're going back there. In His temple, Psalm says, everything says glory. In that state, everyone does everything to the glory of God. Today is rehearsal time. Today is getting used to that. Today is preparing for that. Because eternal life has no curse of sin, no sickness, no death. It's all peace, prosperity, and love. What is and God has shown that to us. And Jesus is reminding us that in the Beatitudes. What is good? Be humble. What is good? Be a peacemaker. What is good? Be merciful. That's what's good. That's what we're going back to. Because the fall introduced love of self. Why would I be humble? I love myself. Why would I be merciful? When if I walk all over people, then it advances me. So why why would I be a peacemaker when my, if I if I make my competitors say I'm a businessman if I make my competitors fight against each other then I get the whole point right not good that's what sin introduced love itself the opposite of what is good on this side of the fall what we need to do is restore goodness. Restore goodness. Restore God's kingdom of love. Because that's what the kingdom of God is about. It's first about love before law. Say that. God's kingdom, God's kingdom is first about love before it's about law. You know, there's this big deal in... Uh, some countries, America, say, about uh, whether to be allowed or prohibited to display the Ten Commandments uh, in schools and offices and government offices, etc. That's the big deal. Fine, but that's good, good. My question is, some ask this, what about the Beatitudes? Why fight for Ten Commandments? It's all, and I'm not saying it's bad, but it's to some, especially non-Christians, they're all a bunch of requirements. What about blessed are the peacemakers? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Right? Blessed are the people. What about that? Nobody's asking for that to be, to be publicized. What about the Beatitudes? That's what Jesus preached. First, right? The first thing he preached was not the Ten Commandments. I'm not, again, I'm not, don't misunderstand. I'm not belittling the requirements. But Jesus is talking about what the kingdom of God is first about. It's about love. It's about what is good. It's like Micah said. Is God more concerned about these requirements of burnt offerings and law and sacrifices and rivers of oil and thousands of animal sacrifices 
is he could more concerned about that or what he has shown you, man? What is good? Walk humbly, love mercy, do justice. These things first. That's what Jesus, the exact representation of the Father, preached and taught first. Matthew chapter 4, before the Beatitudes, just the chapter just before it. The beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus was proclaiming, repent, prepare, because the kingdom of God is here. It's, it's, I'm establishing it right now, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on till eternity. You might physically die. You know what? You'll be resurrected. And you will come back to this very kingdom that I'm establishing now, inaugurating now. So, repent. What does repent mean? Prepare. Repent meaning turn away from your old ways because that's not appropriate in this kingdom. Right? Not appropriate for this kingdom which you are destined for. You're going to be, you're going to enjoy the life in this kingdom. This is your manual. The beatitude. This is what you do. The kingdom of God is here. And he showed what that kingdom is about. What did he do? Did he preach like the, the, the religious leaders who misrepresented the kingdom? Who said, you tithe, you fast, you this and that. Again, those things are all good. But the weightier things of the law, the spirit of the law, Jesus did not just preach, but he personified, he embodied. What did he do? What did he do? He said, repent, the kingdom of God is here. He preached the gospel, the good news. What was the good news? God loves you, he has forgiven you. Shape up for this thing. No, not condemning people. He loved them, he healed them, he fed them. No wonder he drew, drew crowds. No wonder he drew thousands of people. He was like a crowd madman. On the other hand, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were like, like a crowd dispersal unit, right? Right? They're like, they're like uh, uh, tear gas, <laughs> right? Why? Because they condemned people. Jesus loved them. Why did he love them? Because he's love. And because that's what his kingdom is about. And he's wanting us to be appropriate for his kingdom. Change your ways. Prodigal son, clean up. Because your dirty clothes don't go with the Italian marble. Right? And the granite counters. And the, the plush furniture. Preach the good news of God's love. By being loved personified. He taught the kingdom ethos or conduct. He said the greatest commandment is love, not love. Can you imagine Jesus saying, Hero is it? Well, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment, commandment is don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't, don't go to the computer shop and waste all your time there. Don't wear makeup. Don't wear, don't, don't put on lipstick. Don't cut your nails. Don't cut your hair. Right? The greatest commandment is those things. The great, greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And your neighbor as yourself. Imagine him again saying, this is my commandment. That you don't eat pork. You don't eat shellfish. Don't eat food sacrificed to idols. Or animals strangled or, or drink blood. That's my commandment. I'm going to be crucified, so don't forget those things. <laughs> no. You love one another. Why? Because that's the kingdom waiting for you. That kingdom is about that. Not about strangled animals and, and blood and, and a list of other dietary, you know, dietary requirements. 
he loved, before he gave that dimension, he healed before he gave commandments. Did you notice that? He loved Mary Magdalene and forgave her first. Then he told her, no more hanky panky, right? In fact, you know, I don't even recall him telling Matthew, no more, uh, no, no more tone, no more kick back, right? He didn't have to. He just simply loved Matthew. Or Levi, or somebody. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus. And he just said, okay, I feel the love of God. And my ways don't go with this kind of love. So you know what? I will turn to my wickedness. Because that's what God's love is about. I'm not advocating lawlessness. Okay? Don't misunderstand. I'm not advocating lawlessness. But, but sometimes you, you teach love like Jesus did. You will be accused of, like he was, why do you eat with baby hands? Right? Why do you break the Sabbath? Was he? Or was he just simply walking in love? And those legal minds did not get it. He came to restore the kingdom by destroying the works of the enemy. Sin, death, which included hatred, violence, and love of self. That's what he destroyed. The works of the enemy. His, the, the cross is where he defeated those worldly powers and principalities. But sinabi, powers and principalities, hindi ito yung mga multo, right? Yung mga, yung mga black magic and, and you know, uh, works of yung, yung uh, arts and, and stuff. No, 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 no. The works, worldly powers and principalities are, are the system, the spirit of this age, the spirit of the world. Like what I was talking about. Building self up. The opposite of losing your life and preferring one another as more important than yourself. Jesus nailed those powers and principalities, that worldly system, on the cross. How? By walking in kingdom principle. By offering himself, his chief. By offering his coat. By walking the extra mile. By losing his life, thereby gaining life on behalf of all men. You know, I'll just take the heat for you. I'll take the heat. You sin, okay. I, I did not sin. I'll take the heat for you. I'll bear the shame. Me, the sinless one. Because you know what? That's the kingdom of God. And, and that's what I'm inaugurating right now. Hence, I came. What love, right? Everything was taken care of on the cross. You, if you please, everything was paid for on the cross. Nobody has to pay God anything. Nobody. Nobody can pay God anything in the first place. You do reap what you sow, but God does not inflict that on you. You do. If you have free will. You can choose life, you can choose death. But God has provided life for us. He says, see, I'm offering life. Choose it. Choose it. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Patriarch. Who has? Long movie. From, from long ago. 15 years ago or so. It starts off with a narration. Right? Mel Gibson and his character saying, I've always been afraid that someday my, my sins will overtake me. Remember that? You know. Let's see it again. Uh, and he said, I think God is, is uh, exacting payment right now for sins in my past. But the thing is, the gospel says God does not count sins against us. Now, I used to think that God is an eye for an eye God. And I would make deals with him. I would say, I Lord, may nagawa mo kasalanan na. Pwede bang ganito na lang ang punishment ko. Right? Pwede bang ganito na lang. Uh, one time I was, I was going, you know, I had stage fright in, in high school. 
And I'm, I remember making a deal with God, saying, Lord, pwede ba ang punishment ko, huwag naman akong payayin sa harap ng klase ko. Alam ko, nakakasalanan, huwag naman akong payayin. Bigyan mo na lang ako ng sipon or ubo. Yan na lang. O kaya, sige lang. Puntugin mo na lang ako. Pero huwag naman ang payasaan. Because I thought God has to get some retribution. Eye for an eye. God is not like that. God's not bloodthirsty. God's not, oh, pinalo mo ko paganti. Right? Alam niyo, mga bata, gano'n. Nasagi mo ko yun. Paganti nga. Right? God's not like that. No. Of course not. Those are the gods of mythology. The, the ancient gods who demanded blood sacrifice. Virgins, right? That's not our God. Our God is not Zeus. Our God is not a Greek God. Our God is the almighty, loving Father of a God. You don't appease His wrath. You appease, you satisfy His love. You know, parents discipline children, right? Sometimes we, you know, we use certain things to send a message. Not inflict pain, but send a message, right? What are we after? Are we after the pain of the child? Or are we after the result that we want? Ang gusto natin, umayos yung bata, hindi masaktan yung bata. You understand, right? You parents, you understand. Who among you here has done wow? And they go, wow, say an apple. <laughs> right? No. Some of us, some of us cry after hitting our children, right? Many of us, if not all of us, after hitting our children, we, we do use corporal, <clears throat> corporal discipline. Right after we, we, we do that, we look whether they're injured or whether they have a or whatever, right? Because we're not after the pain. We're after them walking in what is good. We're showing them what is good. Right? That's what we're after. If you, us, being evil, know how to do good things for your children, and know how to give good gifts to them, how much more your father How much more? <clears throat> you see, we've misunderstood the Old Testament prefigured. The Old Testament is just a shadow of the, the real things to come. The prefiguring of God. It was a shadow. He was a shadow. If God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, why are we not sacrificing animals? Right? We thought, well, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if He <coughs> commanded Moses to sacrifice animals, then why aren't we today? Because those were shadows. Those were symbolisms of something truer, something fuller. What is it? Kingdom of love. Actually, even in the Old Testament, Jesus, uh, Isaiah says, what is real fasting anyway? Is real fasting abstaining from food? And I'm not saying that's, that's bad. Again, it has a purpose. But what is real fasting? Isn't it to loosen the bonds of, of, of wickedness and slavery? Is it to feed the poor? Old Testament. David said in Psalm 51, has God as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. Behold, sacrifice of God is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That is the real sacrifice. What is the same yesterday, today, and forever is God's love for you and me. 
hope the person beside you tell him, I think he's right. What's the same yesterday for today and forever is God always thinks of our welfare. Like a father, like a parent. If we want to please him, we don't inflict pain on ourselves. Right? And I'm not I'm not attacking, you know, I'm not gonna keep any things. You want to please him? Umay Yuska. Walk in what is good, which he has shown you, which he has preached in the Sermon on the Mount, called the Beatitudes, because it's for your own good, and that's what satisfies God. Our good, not our pain, not our suffering. Plans for us are not for calamity, but for wealth. Because sin, well, well, we establish God's kingdom here and participate in its establishment and its inauguration here by turning away from sin. Because sin is being done away with. That's the, the old kingdom. And God is making all things new. Sin is missing the mark, you know? falling short of the glory of God. The image of God. Goodness. When we sin, we walk below that goodness. We're being subhuman. We're not being the human beings that God created us to be, which is good. Body and the blood of God of, of Christ are the gifts of God. He gave for He gave his life for us. What more can he do? What, what more can you do? What more can we do? Simply feed on Him in our hearts with thanksgiving. And as St. Chrysostom, John Chrysostom said, may we express our thanks not only in our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness, in righteousness, and goodness. That's how we can thank God. Well, what, what we can do is to, to walk in those things. And fulfill the command of God. Love God with all the heart and the name of Jesus. We do this, we rock the boat. And Jesus said this. We rock the boat, we stir up the, uh, stir the awareness nest, and the world will react. They will persecute us. Because their system is being confronted by the system of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and you will be persecuted. And Jesus is saying, rejoice. Rejoice. That means you're walking in what is good. Rejoice. You will inherit the kingdom. You will be ready for the new heavens and the new earth. Um, remember I said something about the prodigal son cleaning up for the mansion of the father, right? And Jesus said to us, my father's house are many mansions. You know what? I'm preparing a place for you there. He's preparing a place for us. Are we preparing ourselves for that place? That's what the Beatitudes is about. For us preparing for a, the place that Jesus is preparing. If we're faithful here and now in this imperfect world, we will be ready for that place world, the life of the world to come. He wants us prepared for that by, kingdom, by living the kingdom life here and now. And you know what? I, I mentioned about when I quoted this from Creed, you know, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. That world to come, I won't presume to know the details about it. All I know is it's the kingdom of God. But you know what? Before that, even before that, let me just say to you what I believe God has put in my heart. There is, let me read the words I, I wrote. There is a cathedral of the king's life to come. 
It is. And not just for our generation, for our children, the children's children. We prepare for them. We do. Prepare, prepare for the future life of Peter, Peter the King before life after death for that in this life. Again, not to be selfish, not just for our generation. I still believe, and some of you know what I'm talking about, I still believe in the vision of the complex. Remember that vision? Complex where we will have uh, a cathedral and, and drug rehab and uh, hospital, maybe housing for certain people. I still believe that. But you know what? It may not happen in my lifetime. I would be happy, I would die happy seeing the seed being planted. I hope to see that seed be planted next month. I really hope so. It's been delayed, but just be patient. I want to see the, the walls rise. Masaya na ako din. Mamamatay na ako ng kami. Hindi din ako kailangan ng data pan. Di ba? Nakilanan ng magaling na ano, makeup artist from Funeralia Mas. Yun na. Because you know what? Our children may get the baton from us and run further. Take it further. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. We will acquire the adjacent block. On the right, on the left, behind. Mga basketball court. Sabi ko nga, Isang araw, tatayo tayo ng bridgeway from there to SM Kalutan. Who knows? But we plant the seed now. Prepare for the good life of the kingdom to come. Not for ourselves, for our children. And who knows, maybe they will acquire a bigger piece of property somewhere else. Two generations from now. Who knows? We plant the seed. We walk now, we prepare now. He has shown us what is good, what the Lord requires of us. Walk in them and participate in this ever increasing kingdom. That's the very way it is in that. Amen? Amen? Let us all stand.